Hello fellow crafters, this is Cheryl of I'm Sure DIY. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you like my video, please like, share, and subscribe so that you'll be notified each time I upload a new video. If you're already a subscriber and you're returning, thank you for your support. So today I will be putting together a framed stove board. It's very interesting seeing it transition and come together. So I'd like for you to join me and I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoy putting it together. Are you ready? Let's go. What you want to do is measure the outer edge of your, the top of your range all the way over to the right side, okay. which is 30 inches. So what you will need to do this project this supply list that I am about to give you as far as the boards are concerned, I do provide for you at the beginning of the video, but the, the one by six, you'll need two 30 inch pieces of this. Um, it might come in one by six by eight, I'm not sure, but you'll need two 30 inch pieces of one by six. The one by four size board, you'll need, okay, you'll need three, 30 inch pieces of the one by four, three 30 inches. So um, that's what you'll need to put this board together. So I have all those pieces cut, Home Depot cut it for free as a courtesy to their customers. And what we will do is we'll take the 30 inch one by four, We'll take the 30 inch one by four, we'll place it at the very top. That will be the beginning of the board. And then we'll take a one by six, we'll place it underneath that, and we'll toggle this until we get to the bottom of the board. So we'll take another 30 inch one by four, place it under that. We'll take a 30 inch one by six, place it under that. And we will take a one by four and place it under that. All of this should be aligned. And um, what you'll do is you'll get a 22 and a half inch, you'll get a 22 and a half inch one by four. And always look at the size because you want the best size up, of course. And we will be putting the one by four, 22 and a half inch on the right side and the one by four, 22 and a half inch on the left side. We'll be gluing those down. And if you have uh, uh, an air nail gun or something that where you want to reinforce it from the bottom up or so whatever, this is, this is, so we'll glue this and we'll glue this and that will secure one, two, three, four, five. That's, that'll secure these pieces when you glue those. And then you'll take the and you'll place it in the middle of this, place it down here. So you should have a frame. You should have something shaped like a frame that goes around the edges of the board. So right now, you can glue all of those things down. Now that we've gotten it all glued down or glued and nailed, if you prefer, it's time to knock off all of the rough edges, especially around the edges and just all over. You want it, you want to have a pretty nice smooth surface even on the bottom. Okay, so this portion of the um, project, it's time to add color to the board that we put together. And if you'll notice, you see one, two, three, four, four of the mini cups. I found those at Dollar Tree. I have them sitting on top of newspaper though, just in case, just in case something drips or something, but I have them there. I'm not going to press on it because they're not strong enough for all of that, but they're strong enough to hold this. What we'll do now is we will stain it with uh, dark walnut number 2716 Menwax stain wood finish, and I will be using a I want to always call this a sponge, but foam, foam brush, but you could also use like a white, lint, you know, something that doesn't have lint that you can rub it on, but I'm going to use the, the brush, but we just want a thin layer, just one layer. Okay, so now I'm finishing up 
I'm staining the board in one layer of the dark walnut uh, stain. And now it's time to exercise patience and wait for the board to dry thoroughly before we go to the next six hours. So I will go ahead to the next step in order to make the weather wood, weathered wood look that I'm going for, I'll need to do uh, mix some white paint with water to dilute it. And it's one part paint, one part water. And the paint that I am using is a flat paint and it's high hide white. It's by Valspar. And I've measured four tablespoons of water, four tablespoons of water already been measured and now I just need to measure out four tablespoons of the paint okay now I will just st stir this mixture really well so we will go on to the next step of adding this to the board. I'll use the white paint mixture and I will paint down the center and all you want to paint. I'm going to start in the center to get that covered first. And but of course I'm going to go over the sides as well. After you've gotten it on, after a few, just a few seconds, you want to get a rag and just rub it in all over. Don't rub very hard. You just want to mix it all together and make sure that you haven't missed any spots. Just make sure you rub it in and then continue to spread it in the other areas. Okay, now that you've added the whitewash um, mixture to the stained wood, so now it's time to sand it to get it that give it that weathered look. And we will start with 80 grit, a piece of 80 grit sandpaper. I happen to have this little sand block thing, but usually I don't. And um, I will just cut a piece of wood about this size and wrap this sandpaper around it and it does the same thing. Don't be aggressive. So when you sand this, just lightly sand it until you see what you like, what you want your board to look like with the weather look and just go over it. And then just lightly go over it. It's already starting to look really nice. Then we'll move on and rough up the edges. You can do that with the 80 grit to make it really look weathered and older looking. And that brings out some character in it. The next step, um, You'll want to put polycrylic, Minwax water-based polycrylic to seal in all this goodness. <laughs> so we want it to be sealed and I will probably put maybe three coats on it since it is a stove board and you'll be handling it a lot, something might spill and that way you could just wipe it up and go on about your business and allow it to dry between each between each coat allow it to dry All right and with the polycrylic still go with the grain and just put one thin coat because you're going to come back and do 
probably two more coats anyway. Okay, so our weathered wood, weathered wood stove board <laughs> is complete. So the, the, the ceiling is all dried, so it's ready to go with the exception. It will have to have handles. And I picked these two handles up at Lowe's. Look at the designs on each side of it. It's really, really pretty. But 98 cents per handle. So I don't think that was bad at all. And I'll just have to measure to see exactly where to place it in the center of these two sides. The total is 22 and a half. So, okay, so let's go with eight. Eight and three fourth. So from tip to tip, let me check this side over here. Yep, eight and three fourth. So that's where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to be right there, eight and three fourths from the from each edge. And from the sides, three and a half. Okay, all right. So the tip here should be centered at one and three fourths on both sides, one and three fourths. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's where it's supposed to go. And what I will do is I will mark this. And sometimes I'll mark it with a pencil, but this time, because this is so light, I plan to mark it, a dot in it with a pen. And I'll do both sides. I'll measure both sides. And I will mark it with a pen. And I will um, attach these two hands. Okay, so the best position to be in to screw something in this direction is to stand, not sit and try to screw it this way because it'll be quick. Remember to stand so that you'll get this angle and start slowly and then speed up the process as it, as you know it's caught into the wood. After you're done, you just wanna go back just to make sure that the handles are secure and everything is all screwed down nice and tight so that when you remove it or place it on your stove, it'll be done safely. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you worked right along with me, honey, this is our board. Again, thank you for joining me. Until next time, bye-bye.